Question 1 from the 2009 Advanced Hire. Part A. There's a function which is expressed as a product. You need to find the values of x for which the derivative of that product is equal to 0 for 3 marks. So that's just going to be the product rule then. There are two parts to it. You could consider that four parts, expanding that out, but there's no need to do that. If you did do that, if it was a product that was made up of several parts, if you had some function which was made up of a list of various functions, there's four to begin with, then to get the derivative of that, it's simply a case of taking turns, going through them cyclically, differentiating one of them at a time, leaving the others alone. So we'd start off with a dashed of x, leaving the b, c and the d alone. And then b dashed of x, leaving the a, c and d alone. And so on. Just let them take turns. So, for this one, product of the two parts, that's a function of a function, chain if you like. So for the derivative, for f dashed of x, I'll be differentiate the first one, well that'll just be 1, leaving that one alone x minus 2 cubed, plus leave the first one alone and proceed to differentiate the second one. Now, function of function, out of function cubed, so it'll be 3 times the thing, the inner function, squared, times the derivative of the inner part, which is just a 1. And then tidying that up, I suppose, well, I don't really need to use another line, but I've said it, so I'll just write it down, x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared, with that 3 at the front, now, I know, since I have to find the values of x for which the derivative is equal to 0, I don't want to equate that to 0, I'm looking for a factorisation, so immediately I look for any common factors. And there are x minus 2 twice. So you could take out x, the factor x minus 2 squared, leaving you with one factor here of x minus 2, I could leave it in a bracket, plus 3 times x plus 1 having the x, plus, x minus 2 squared already. So that's going to give me x minus 2 squared times, and then just tidying that up yourself, I've got 3x and another x is 4x, and I've got plus 3 minus 2 plus 1. So there's f dashed x. Then, f dashed x equals 0 means that this product equals 0, in which case either of its factors can equal 0, so I've got a double root here at x equals 2, or a single root here at x equals negative a quarter. That's the first part. And B. Calculate the gradient of the curve defined by this implicit equation here at this point. Now this time all it says is calculate the gradient. It doesn't say first of all find an expression for the gradient, find an expression for the derivative. So what you could do is just differentiate it and without tidying it up like in part A to a nice neat result and then popping in the numbers, you could just once you have it in the form of, in the differentiated form, just pop the x's and y's in. I'll do it both ways. So what I've got first, I need to differentiate it. I think I'll just pop the y's across, multiply everything by y, may look a bit worse to begin with, and then just differentiate it 10 by 10. So that's simply 2x. That's a product. So that's going to be 1 times y, differentiating the x first, plus leave the x alone and differentiate y with respect to x. That'll be dy by dx. That's a function of a function, because y is a function of x. So it'll be differentiate the outside, 2 times the thing to the power 1, times the derivative of the inside, which is the y, so dy by dx, minus 5 times the derivative dy by dx. Now, rather than tidy all that up to read neatly dy by dx equals, and then popping in the numbers, you could just throw in the numbers just now. I'll do it that way first. So if I just throw in these numbers, and then I'll go back and tidy up, just because I like to have things nice and tidy, then I would have all the x's are replaced by 3's, all the y's are replaced by negative 1's. So I've got 2 times 3, that's a 6. I've got a y, so that's a minus 1. I've got an x, so that's a 3 times, maybe at this point I'll just switch to m, because I know that dy by dx is the gradient. It's 2y, so that's a negative 2, and that's the gradient. Minus 5 times the gradient. 
So tidying it all up to this side, if I put the M's in this side, I've got negative 7 goes over as plus 7, plus the 3 makes 10M, and that's a 5 going to go over as a negative 5, so the gradient's going to be negative 5 upon 10, or if you like, the gradient's going to be negative a half. Maybe that line I'll just say, since M equals dy by dx. And that should do it. Because strictly speaking, I didn't need an explicit expression for the derivative. However, we'll go back to that line. Back to here then. Gathering up the dy by dx's. So dy by dx would have what in front of it? We'll start from here. I've got an x bringing over a minus 2y plus a 5 equals anything that doesn't involve it, throw that over, they're both going to end up negative unfortunately, negative 2x minus y, so dy by dx would be negative 2x minus y over x minus 2y plus 5, and just for complete neatness, I'm going to remove those negatives just by multiplying the top and the bottom by negative 1, and I've got 2x plus y over, and that's only term to be positive, so 2y minus x, minus 5. Extra work and unnecessary in this case because it just asks for the gradient. And then I could simply say, well, what happens at that point then? So since the gradient equals dy by dx, it's going to equal, at this point, 2 times 3 plus a negative 1 over 2 times negative 1 minus a 3 minus a 5 which is 5 over negative 2, negative 3, negative 5, negative 10, which means the gradient, as before, is negative a half. There, that would be the longer way that gives this satisfying neat result.